Okay, the executive session of the Wayne Board of Education regular virtual meeting of June 25th, 2020 was convened virtually. <laughs> uh, the statement of compliance setting forth time, date, and location was read in accordance with the requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act and the roll call was taken. The meeting was recessed and is now being reconvened. Uh, if we could have the flag salute. You can put up the photo. Thank you so much. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, sorry. Moment of silence. Okay, thank you. Um, let's start with the superintendent's report. Do we need to move to open into reopen? Bill, Mr. Moffat? You can if you'd like. Well, I'm just asking if it's necessary. Yes. I would suggest you do. Okay. So can I get a mover to reconvene? I move. Stacy. Second. Suzanne. Okay, Dr. Toback. I don't think we need a roll call on that. Okay. So what um, would like to do is start by reading a statement, a resolution against racism on behalf of the Wayne Board of Education. So whereas the Wayne Board of Education recognizes that schools can be a powerful force in generating change and that our school community shares a collective responsibility to reject all forms of individual and systemic racism as destructive to our educational mission, values, and goals. Whereas the board further recognizes that formally taking a stand against racism in all forms is an important step for all institutions and that the Wayne Board of Education in word and through action seeks to clearly communicate our position against racism and stands with the black community to condemn the violence, marginalization, microaggressions, and other behaviors that have devastated and devalued so many lives. Whereas the board annually adopts a set of goals to create priorities, address challenges, and provide direction for the community, and whereas the board is committed to establishing a diversity, equity, and inclusion goal for the 2020-2021 school year that includes the following elements. One, internal and external review of policies, practices, procedures, and curricula through a diversity, equity, and inclusion lens to be completed through a committee process, and then to provide a list of recommended changes or new policies, practices, and procedures. Two, creation of a creation of a district diversity, equity, and inclusion statement to be integrated throughout the district. Three, assessing nicknames, mascots, slogans, and school symbols that may be offensive or otherwise counterproductive to our mission, value, and goals. Four, professional development program to include bias awareness training, anti-racism training, and training for restorative practices. Five, publication of a report on diversity, equity, and inclusion, which will be shared with the public on an annual basis using the supporting activities of our goal as a basis for the first report. Six, budgeting to support the purchase of additional instructional materials, materials and resources to support the goal. Now therefore be it resolved that the Wayne Board of Education directs the superintendent of schools to take any and all action necessary to establish an advance a diversity, equity, and inclusion goal to include the above elements and to include any other supporting activity deemed necessary to carry out the goal and to present the goal at the next regular meeting of July 16th, 2020. Thank you, Dr. Jonah. All right. So now um, what I'd like to do is just get to my administrative summary report. Okay. So um, good evening, everybody. The school year came to a close on June 18th, and I wanted to take a moment to thank all of our staff members and our administrators for all their work in making the end of the year special for our students and parents, especially our moving up and graduation events, which were virtual. I believe that each of the events was well done, and each was something for our school district to take pride in, especially considering, considering that virtual graduations are new for all of us. Tonight, the Board of Ed will engage in further discussion about the plans for each of our modified in-person graduation events for high school students after reviewing the results of the thought exchange that took place throughout this past week. 
We had over th uh, 310 participants who shared 451 thoughts and the exchange showed high levels of agreement on a number of issues. The first area of agreement was that July 30th was a date that was too far in the future for a graduation event. There was solid support to have the event on July 8th with a rain date of July 9th. Another area where there was a high level of support was keeping the graduating class together with no guests in attendance as opposed to splitting the class up for two events per high school. Of course, with a single event for each class, we would live broadcast so anyone would be able to watch. There was also strong agreement that we should hold this event in the morning and that a barbecue luncheon would be welcome as an option after the graduation event is complete. So um, any action for the Board of Ed tonight is reflected with the emergent administrative item R3. Um, one of the most important activities in the district this summer includes the development of a plan for students and staff to safely return to school. And we've had a return to school committee working diligently to consider a variety of issues and to further investigate um, problems we might experience. We also formed eight subcommittees. I've reported this previously. After numerous meetings, we have a well-considered set of questions that need to be resolved. And tomorrow, the New Jersey Department of Education is scheduled to release guidance about the reopening of schools. We'll match this guidance with our existing set of committee questions. And from there, we'll be left with a list of questions that will be answered and another list that will be needed, that we will need to answer locally. Once we receive this guidance, we'll be able to share more information. Also, the return of our high school athletic programs is another important topic that required guidance. And in this case, from the New Jersey Interscholastic Athletic Association, which issued guidance on June 20th. Both of our athletic directors at Wayne Hills and Wayne Valley, also our school administrators and our coaches are working on a plan to allow a safe return to our practice field in the coming weeks. Um, so as far as our HIV report goes, during this reporting period, there was one incident reported as HIV after a thorough, invest sorry, after a thorough investigation. The reported incident was found to be an actual case of HIV. Is that the end of your report, Dr. Toback? It is. Okay. Um, let's move on to the presentation. Would that be you, Mrs. Reichman? Yeah. Just need um, Dr. Bouchard to bring it up. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Good evening, everyone. I'm here to share out the end of the year goal report. You can present the, um, advance the next slide. The, the first goal that I wanted to report out on was our wellness goal. This was um, year two of this goal, and we are now recognizing that there is a need to um, continue with this goal. Um, this past year, the district offered a host of wellness workshops and very training for staff and students to provide tips and strategies for increasing mindfulness, reducing stress, and improving overall health, fitness, and nutrition. Several of the workshops were offered to staff members to participate for their own personal growth in these areas, as well as to offer training and simple practices that can be passed along to students and colleagues. Due to the COVID-19 school closure, we're recognizing that there's an even greater need to continue with the wellness goal in the 2020-21 school year, and this will have a new focus on a safe return to school. It's critical that the district continue to prioritize the new and, and unanticipated needs of our students and staff. For so many students, families, and staff, the COVID-19 school shutdown period led to increased stress and social isolation at home. The district is committed to staying current in best practices for a safe return that addresses how to best meet the social and emotional wellness needs for our staff and students. We will continue to evaluate the needs of our students and staff throughout the summer months and are committed to providing ongoing support, delivering practical information and preparing for counseling workshops that will meet the needs of our students and staff for increased wellness. The second goal that I'd like to report out on is our ESL expansion plan. This year, additional ESL staffing was added along with new class sections in our elementary schools. And this resulted in greater participation and fewer student refusals. More students are now serviced in their home schools through ESL programming and identification, 
And um, Dr. Bouchard, you could advance the next slide. I have a few data points that I wanted to share out. Uh, the expansion led to a new program at APT, which currently serves 30 students. This ex expansion also led to reduced student-teacher ratio at Ryerson Elementary School. We reduced the opt-out, which was the primary um, intent of the goal, and the refusal population by 13 students. We continue to trend upward and exiting more students over the past few years. And, and this means that we've met the language requirements for general education. For this year, um, due to the fact that we do not have testing, uh, we'll have an unofficial count. Uh, but we did receive some new guidance and we have some surveys and decisions that we'll be making over the next couple of weeks as to how we'll assess the needs of these students when we return in the fall. Last year, 19 students were moved back to APT from Pines, and this also helped, um, not only did we service these kids in their homeschool, but it also saved um, additional funding for transportation expenses. Uh, we increased teacher training for ESL in, bu in buildings. We now have a new dual language lending library, which lends out books in nearly 20 languages to families. It's nice because they can see the English on one side and then their language translation on the other side. And um, we continue to develop expansion plans. Next year, we are looking at a proposed plan to add an ESL um, add services and staffing at Tunis Dye and James Fallon and Elementary Schools and a special education program for ESL support at Anthony Wake. Goal three was using data to enhance instructional decision making and maximize student growth. Uh, this was reported out on um, mid-year, uh, where we talked about our assessment practices and how we expanded them to evaluate student achievement. Again, with distance learning and the school shutdown, we recognize that this is really more critical now than ever. Um, we're, you know, it, we're assuming that in many homes um, and, and in many situations, students may have fallen behind. It was a very rough time for our teachers, for our students, for parents, um, so many working and homeschooling their children. What we did was we added in new assessments at the end of the year to gather current data based on where the students were at in their ELA um, and math learning. And we have plans to give another assessment in the beginning of the school year. These were offered through the Linkit program. Um, and these will be in addition to our own assessments that go with the programs we have in place. This will give us um, data points to start out and just make determinations about what student grouping should look like and what remediation should look like for students when they return. We did make some um, on the spot decisions, just recognizing that there were some kids who really did fall behind and could benefit from summer support. And we are offering two week sessions, um, inclusive of book clubs, um, small math instruction and small reading group instruction to students. Um, recognizing that this will help when they return and they'll have some additional work that they can focus on during the summer months. And our last goal is the early childhood expansion and transition to full day kindergarten. Again, this was year one of a two year goal. The early childhood center Preakness renovation is near completion. Um, I have here that a, a final walkthrough, but it's a really a progress walkthrough. <laughs> it's scheduled for Monday, June 29th. Uh, things are moving along very quickly and the school is near completion. The playground installation is complete. If you happen to drive by, you'll see that we have a state of the art playground, which is really, really nice. Um, we will be able to offer weather permitting and assuming we're back in school, all kinds of services, OT, PT, speech, outdoor for students. The new Early Childhood Center principal will begin July 1st. We're excited to have her on board and parent outreach will begin in August. Um, today we just started work on our website for the Early Childhood Center, so we'll be um, excited to launch that this summer. And we are planning for a ribbon cutting and a virtual or small in-person tours, depending um, on, on what the situation is at the time, in, in late August. And this completes my report. If you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Thanks. Anyone have any question or comment on the goal report? Thank you, Mrs. Reichman. Great job, everyone. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Putta. I was just gonna say good job, thank you. Oh, thank you. 
well done. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. Back to you, Mr. Moffat, revisions to the agenda. Right, we have a few tonight. Uh, under the uh, I section education, items one to two, we have uh, additional information on, or I should say a revision of our number two, which is approval of 2020-2021 out of district placements and related services. We are going to revise uh, number 19. Uh, student ID should be uh, number 8069294805. We have um, an additional, it was uh, the, the WEA, was that con conducted a discussion in? Um, That's moving forward. So, okay, so I'll add it, okay. So that uh, is going to read again under emer emergent dash education S section. Um, and that will read, resolve that the Board of Education upon the recommendation of the superintendent hereby approves the sidebar agreement between the Wayne Township Board of Education and the Wayne Education Association with respect to the negotiated stipend for lead counselors for the 2020-2021 uh, school year as attached by reference and further authorizes the board president and secretary to execute same on behalf of the board. The business administrator and superintendent are authorized to take all further steps required by the terms of the settlement to further implement same. Under item T, emergent human resources, uh, we are going to revise a few items. Under item one, which is approval of additional compensation, number four, we will be adding date July 1st, 2020 to September 4th, 2020 as needed. Uh, number five, we are going to add a date of July 1st, 2020 through September 4, 2020, and add as needed. Number six, summer assistive add, uh, summer assistive team, um, and that we're going to add a date, which is July 1st, 2020 through September 4th, 2020, at seven and a half hours each. Number seven, we are going to add 40 hours each item, uh, and that's going to uh, add dates of July 1st, 2020 through September 4th, 2020. And number eight, summer SOAR, we're adding the dates uh, July 1st, 2020 through September 4th, 2020 uh, for seven, uh, 75 hours each. Under emergent T, emergent heat, uh, resources continued, uh, we are going to add uh, item number seven, which is approval of increment restoration. Uh, that re resolution uh, reads, resolve that the Board of Education upon the recommendation of the superintendent approves the restoration of the step placement and the adjustment and employment increments totaling $4,475 for employee ID, uh, ID number 6989, retroactively to July 1st, 2019. The business administrator and superintendent are authorized to take all further steps to implement the same. We're also adding number eight to that section under T, which reads uh, as approval of increment restoration, and that reads resolve that the Board of Education upon the recommendation of the superintendent approves the restoration of the step placement and the adjustment and employment increments totaling $2,575 for employee ID number 1346, retroactive to July 1st, 2019. The business administrator and superintendent are authorized to take all further steps to implement same. Moving on to emergent school resource finance, which is uh, section V. We are adding uh, under uh, the number nine, which is approved 2020-2021 school year contracts. We're adding uh, number two, number four, uh, that was a blank area of the agenda. Uh, so the amount to be filled in on that grid is going to be $279,500. That's under that Sodexo amount. Uh, we will be adding the following uh, two contracts. The first one is for Northern Region Education Co Commission, which is regular summer school. The location is district-wide. Uh, it's not to, uh, it's an NA, which is not to exceed because it's a pass-through. It's a, an expense just for students. 
um, uh, it's, uh, a methodology is A, and the contract term is uh, from July 6, 2020 to July 31st, 2020, uh, 20, which is just the summer. Uh, number six uh, is Colditz and Zuka LLC for treasurer of school monies, district-wide, for an amount not to exceed of $7,600. Contract term would be for July 1st, uh, 2020 through June um, 30, 2021. We are also adding in the Emergent School Resource Finance section of B uh, as item number 11, which is approval of general special education attorney. Uh, the resolution reads as follows, be it resolved that the Wayne Township Board of Education approves Skarnici and Hollenbeck as our general and special education attorney for the 2020-2021 fiscal year. The only other item I'd just like to point out, I, we did send, uh, I did send an email late today, it has to do with the 2019-2020 report for uh, contracts, uh, so that you have that. If you, do, if you need another copy or have any questions, feel free to contact me. And that can, concludes my revision section. And just um, one addition, Mr. Moffitt, it has Thanks. to do with emergent administrative item R3. And that is the the authorization to go ahead with the um, the graduation event, modified in-person graduation event. So that's something that the insurance company is asking us, and the Department of Ed is asking us to have approved by the Board of Ed first. And um, after discussion and after reviewing the results of the thought exchange, um, the resolution that reflects that is resolved that the Board of Ed, upon recommendation, superintendent approve a graduation event at each high school only for graduates of the class of 2020 to be held on July 8th at 10 a.m., the rain date of July 9th, also at 10 a.m. Following social, social distancing requirements in effect at the time, the Board of Ed authorizes the administration to hire staff and approve volunteers as needed for supervision. Okay. That, that's the uh, agenda that's revisions completed. Okay, this portion of the meeting is open to citizens for comment on agenda items only. Residents are to state their names, addresses, and subject matter. Comments may be limited to five minutes per person. Members of the public are discouraged from speaking negatively about an employee or a student. The board bears no responsibility for comments made by the public. Comments regarding employees or students cannot be legally responded to by the board. Other comments may be responded to tonight or at subsequent meetings under old business. Can I get a mover? I'll move it. Second. Second. Pavlak, Mrs. Scher. And Dr. Burchard. I don't see any hands raised. Madam President, see no one. Wait, wait, they're coming. Okay. They're coming. <laughs> okay. I can't see. Okay. Hello. Hi. Oh, okay. Name and address. Uh, okay. My name is Amanda Keel, and I'm a resident of 11 Alma Deer Drive, and I'm here to talk about the Wayne Valley mascot. Go ahead. Okay. Um, again, my name is Amanda Keel. Uh, I'm going to be a senior at Wayne Valley this fall. And a little over a week ago, I created a petition called Change the Wayne Valley Mascot, in which I explained the issue with mascots that portray Native Americans and how they are hindering Wayne schools from teaching their lessons of inclusion and equality that they aim to teach. Since it was uploaded, the petition has gained over 2,700 signatures from people of diverse backgrounds, including current students, graduated students from many generations, parents, uh, previous Wayne Valley teachers, and other community members, as well as Native Americans who do not agree with the way that we represent their race. With recent events surrounding racism, both globally and locally, it is time to address the racism present in Wayne and make changes accordingly. Um, for those of you who might not have read the petition or don't know about this issue with Native American mascots, uh, the history of retiring mascots like these goes back for decades. 
and the National Congress of American Indians started their campaign to end Native American mascots in the 1960s. Um, their website says that, and this is a quote that I got, rather than honoring Native peoples, these caricatures and stereotypes are harmful, perpetuate negative stereotypes of America's first peoples, and contribute to a disregard for the personhood of Native peoples. We are sending Wayne Valley students the wrong message through the use of our Indian mascot. It is not our right as non-Natives to decide how Native Americans are portrayed, their physical and emotional traits, or anything else. A race is not a mascot, and if you substitute the name Indians for any other race, you can see how wrong this is. One comment on the petition reads, I am a proud Native American woman. I am not a darn mascot. Neither are my people or anyone else. This week, Pascac Hills and Pascac Valley Regional High Schools here in New Jersey decided that it's time to retire their Indians and cowboy mascots. A recently retired Wayne Valley teacher commented on the petition that he believes that Wayne's similar Indians versus Patriots mentality is problematic because it romanticizes the historical genocide of Native American people at the hands of the Patriots. The most important thing that we can do now is admit that it's time to change the mascot and stop actively promoting it as a symbol that represents Wayne Valley. I understand that there are constraints physically and monetarily, but with a timeline of gradual changes over the next few months and years, Wayne Valley can create a more positive environment for their students, something that we all want to see. Another previous Wayne Valley teacher who is Native American himself commented that to claim tradition or money or similar reasons as to justify keeping the current mascot is selfish and unethical. Nostalgia and tradition do not outweigh the dignity and respect that everyone deserves to be treated with. I do have faith in our community. I do believe that if the district is really dedicated to eliminating racism and creating a better environment for their students, we will see a change in the Wayne Valley mascot. I am proud to be a Wayne Valley student and a member of the Wayne community, but I am not proud to call myself an Indian and almost 2,800 people agree that this mascot needs to be changed. Being an Indian might represent things like pride, strength, and togetherness, but so can countless other mascots. It might be hard to admit that something that people once supported was wrong, but it is the first step in creating a safer, more accepting environment for the students in our district. I encourage the Wayne community and Board of Education to have empathy for the students of color who are subject to racism in their own schools. I encourage everyone to research why so many colleges, universities, high schools, and sports teams have dropped their Native American mascots in the past and why people continue to fight for this. We cannot let sentiments and nostalgia keep us from making progress that we want to need, want and need to see in our schools. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have more hands, Dr. Bouchard. Chad. Yes, hello. Uh, my name is Chad Tanous. I'm a former resident of 26 Beachwood in Wayne, New Jersey. Um, I'm here to speak today about the mascot, which uh, Amanda Kyle just spoke to you about. On June 23rd, NJ.com reported that the Pascac Valley Schools abolished further use of a Native American mascot. A recent change.org petition started by Wayne Valley's own Amanda Kyle has brought this issue to light in the Wayne Collective. I have some things to say about the Wayne Valley School and its mascot. I grew up in Pakenac, attended Pakenac Elementary School, and I graduated from Wayne Valley High School in 2012. Many who remember me may remember me and many of my friends as troublemakers, and I would say that I think that's a fair assessment. Me and my, tier, my peers at the time were psychologically broken by the Wayne Valley School District by the time we got to senior year. Many of us who were LGBT or ethnic were dealing with personal and financial issues in addition to facing discrimination within the Wayne school system. So it's clear to see why many of us appeared apathetic at the time. But I was also introduced to a lot of great teachers and thinkers who changed my life for the better. Like Alison Solomon, my drama teacher, who she was a world-class actor and writer. She helped me get into the Stella Adler studio of acting in New York City for the summer between my junior and senior year. That experience opened me up to the true beauty of diversity just outside my mostly white neighborhood. And Dr. White, my AP language and composition teacher, who taught me lessons about form that I still implore in my professional career as a strategic writer. These positive experiences within Wayne Valley only serve to make my re recollection of abuse toward non-white students all the more confusing. 
How could a town with such great educators also maintain such an inhospitable environment for minorities? Since leaving Wayne, I've lived in two different states, started and invested in several business ventures, and as of right now, I am studying at the University of Colorado Boulder with an in-state tuition grant. I'm the president of my school's chapter of Students for Sensible Drug Policy, an anti-drug war nonprofit. The work I have done with formerly incarcerated victims of the racially motivated war on drugs has changed my life. In addition to all of this, I'm a published poet and essayist. With all of the accomplishments I have attained and all of the perspectives I have listened to, I'm still quite ashamed to be from Wayne because of the mascot. The failing public school system of Wayne fosters bigotry in the hearts and minds of its students with its outdated arts and sciences curriculum and its insensitive portrayal of the great Native American warriors who lived in this land before it was, quote, made clear for cultivation, unquote. There is no amount of research I can do to make sense of the mistreatment of marginalized students I witnessed in the Wayne school system. If any, are, if any Jewish or non-Jewish white family friends of mine moved from Wayne, my family would always say, looks like they couldn't take the pressure of living with the bigotry in the school system. I posted the petition to change the Wayne Valley mascot on the Facebook pages, I'm from Wayne, New Jersey, and remembering Packinac Lake about two weeks ago. While I know these pages are not officially affiliated with the township of Wayne, the comments I was met with were truly disturbing. The members lamented in droves of hundreds, how long will this go on and when does it end? As if respecting someone else's culture is a great upheaval to the sanctity of their way of life. As a historian and a scholar, it is my opinion that there is still something truly fundamentally white supremacist within Wayne's culture and it comes out in the school system. It surfaces within the school board's reluctance to bring the Wayne Valley High School into the 21st century. I urge the board of, member, board of Ed members not to turn the mascot into a partisan matter when considering this issue the next time it comes before them. This has nothing to do with left or right, liberal or conservative, Democrat or Republican. Changing the Wayne Valley High School mascot is, is an issue of basic human respect. I'm a proud libertarian and I believe that it is your duty to reflect the egalitarian philosophies of this country by making Wayne Valley a more inclusive and respectful place for all. Please get rid of the mascot. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Wilt. Hi, how are you? My name is Steve Wilt, 23 Perrin Drive, Wayne. Um, so I, I have a, a slightly different viewpoint than the, the last two speakers, and I, I totally respect their opinion. Um, but I think if, if we're going to make a change like this, maybe it should be up to the community and the people and the, the vast majority of people that to make that decision and in whichever direction that falls, I think that, you know, the people should be the ones making the decision, not the select few. And, and, and I'm happy that 2,700 people signed the petition, but again, it's 2,700 people out of the whole, the whole town, enough people to make that decision to, to take something away or make a change, positive, negative, whatever it may be. That being said, I don't necessarily see their point and, and I would rather see the school board focus on things that, that are a little bit more concerning as to, you know, if people are worried about racism and all these things and, and trying to bring it more to light nowadays. Let's focus on doing things that are actually going to affect the children more and, and teach them, them about it, making them more aware about it. And, and I'm, I'm honestly a little offended that, you know, about the last comment, how, you know, the, the white supremacist mentality or whatever that comment was, about the school board because I've never seen it. I grew up in Wayne, I still live in Wayne. I'm not looking to leave Wayne and I've never heard or seen any of these things. So I'm, I'm a little offended by that comment alone. But I, I think at this point, I think if, if we're looking to make a change, I think the change should be from what the town wants and what the people in the town not want, not a minority, whichever way that lands. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. We have more. Mr. Thompson. Hello, my name is Timothy Thompson. I'm from 138 Lowy Avenue. I'm a graduate of Wayne Valley from the class of 2019. I currently attend the University of Michigan as a rising sophomore. I first wanna say thank you to the Wayne Board of Ed for taking steps to address racism in our town tonight and our school system and for publicly and explicitly denouncing racist acts in our country, in our town. These actions and words make many in the town feel like they're finally being heard and have a safe space to come forward and discuss issues they are passionate about. 
However, I do want to speak honestly and from a place of care and passion as a graduate of the Wayne Public School System and share with you that as an LGBTQ African American boy, I have been failed by the Wayne Public School System. It was in middle school where I began to hear the N-word without a single thing being done by my teachers. Freshman year of high school, I witnessed kids being openly, um, kids openly displaying Confederate flags and experienced what it, what it was like to be called a faggot, still going unaddressed by my teachers. Sophomore year, I was harassed by a group of kids who were upset that I did a, a project on Colin Kaepernick and had my life threatened by a separate group of kids who were angered by my identity as a gay boy. Junior year, I was told by, by a friend that his gym teacher harassed him for being too feminine to the point where he had to switch teachers and drop a sport he was involved in. Senior year, I witnessed teachers chase black students around the hallway for wearing do-rags and, and saying, quote, they are trying to be like the gangs in Patterson. And in the past two weeks, while organizing a Black Lives Matter protest in Wayne, my friends and I received numerous cyber attacks and death threats. These are just a few of the, of, of the scarring incidents of racism and prejudice that I have experienced in this town by peers and officials that have gone unchecked and unacknowledged by classmates, teachers, and local officials. And I'll tell you the truth, and I'll tell you exactly why that happened. Because the Wayne education system has not educated its students on the truth of American history and modern day American society. Why was college the first time I learned about activists and leaders like Angela Davis, Fred Hampton, Malcolm X, and the Black Panther movement? Why wasn't I taught any LGBTQ history in high school? Why weren't we taught about the systematic oppression of minorities that include institutions that still affect minorities to this day, like the, like the prison industrial complex or redlining? My, te my team and I have conducted several interviews over the past three weeks with officials both local and out of town as well as community leaders, and almost none of them knew about the institutional systems that allowed Wayne to directly profit off of the oppression of its neighboring town. Many cities in New Jersey have. I often wonder if kids in our, town, in our schools knew the truth about the history of towns like Wayne and Patterson, maybe they wouldn't be so quick to disparage the citizens of that town. Why isn't the Confederate flag being denounced as a hate symbol in the same way the swastika is, is denounced as a hate symbol? Why aren't, why, and why, are, um, why wasn't I taught about African-American trailblazers who made an impact on history and the society that we know it to, to be today? Lastly, why has Wayne Public Schools been supporting the appropriation of a historically oppressed and persecuted race? Many schools have already taken steps to change their mascots, and I hope Wayne will follow the rest of the country in doing what's right. I also want you to know that because you guys have publicly denounced racism in this town and are considering taking measurable change in the community, know that you might get some backlash from people in the town who are perpetuating the racism in this town, just like how my friends and I got backlash when we put on our protest. But while you are making these changes, I wanna share with you the words of one of my favorite authors, JK Rowling. There comes a time where everyone must choose between what is right and what is easy. I hope you guys make the right choice. I will leave you with this. Last week, I attended a BLM protest in Patterson led by a 13-year-old girl who used to attend James Fallon. However, she was bullied and harassed so much for the color of her skin that she transferred to a private school. I wonder if that would have changed if maybe she had a few more people of color in her class, a, a, a teacher who was a person of color, or even a curriculum that properly represented her in her history. I know the feeling of being the only African-American in all my classrooms for 12 years. Over 5,000 people in Wayne, New, Jer in Wayne, New Jersey um, have signed petitions for a changing of the curriculum. Over 2,000 have, have signed to change the mascot. Please, please take measurable steps for change. Thank you. Thank you very much. Still have a couple more. Ms. Budnick. Hi, my name is Marissa Budnick at 38 Clinton Lane in Wayne. I graduated Wayne Valley in 2016. First of all, I want to acknowledge the work the Board of Ed is doing for COVID right now. I know how difficult that must be, so I applaud you for your efforts. And now I want to discuss diversifying the curriculum. I have learned more about Black history in this month that I did in, than I did in my 12 years in the Wayne Public School System. I learned about redlining and the prison, the prison industrial system and how it was designed to lock slaves back up. I learned more about Black leaders, authors, activists this past month than I did in my 12 years in the Wayne School System. 
the only black authors I learned about in high school, learned of in high school, were Maya Angelou and Langston Hughes. My hope is that you will implement more than just four weeks of the real history of the US, including indigenous, Latinx, Asian, and LGBT history and literature. The documentary 13th by Ava du Duverne Duvernay and the discussion of the prison system directly coming from slavery and the purposeful lockup of free slaves should be a mandatory watch and discussion in class. I learned of that documentary this month and it has changed my life and my views. Also, I am, in I am in full support of changing the Wayne Valley mascot. A race should not be represented as a mascot. The snack stand at Wayne Valley athletic events should not be called the TP. The school newspaper should not be called smoke signals. That is cultural appropriation and offensive and I hope the mascot will finally change. Pascac Valley did it, so we can do it too. I also encourage the diversifying of the teachers. I had one by POC teacher and it was Mrs. Sean, the school nurse at James Fallon. It is imperative that students of color have teachers that look up, that they that look like them to feel represented. I, along with Timmy who just spoke, attended a march in Patterson a few weeks ago led by a 13 year old girl. I talked to her, we talked to her grandmother and she said how this girl initially attended James Fallon but transferred to a private school after feeling ostracized and discriminated against for being one of the only black girls in a predominantly white class. That should not happen and it breaks my heart that this happened at my elementary school. I encourage you to look at the position of the student equity advocate in schools. Montclair schools have this position and they act as a liaison between students and families and the district. They work with students, who experience racism, harassment, etc. in schools, and that girl from Fallon could have used someone in that position for help. I implore you to do more research on this position and how it can benefit students and families in the Wayne school system. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next. Ms. Appel. Are you there? Sorry, I think there was a, can you hear me? I'm sorry. Yes, yes. again, now we hear you. Okay, sorry about that. It's okay. Um, so I attended Wayne schools from kindergarten to graduating Wayne Valley in 2017. I wanted to speak on behalf of the racial perspective I feel students were lacking throughout Wayne schools. As we know, Wayne is a predominantly white town, and this shows especially since I personally do not remember more than one black teacher from all my years in Wayne public schools. This was the norm, and it was easy for people to dismiss this was an issue entirely, but in retrospect, I and my peers have lacked vital context for understanding the true depth and nature of the oppression and issues our black peers face. As we do not have teachers themselves who can communicate a black experience, it is even more integral to, to include a black perspectives in all subjects throughout the curriculum. Why have, why have myself, as well as many of my friends from Wayne Schools, just learned about Juneteenth this month, when it has been an event in history since June 19th, 1865? Omitting black history is harmful to students, especially to those who do not have the means to educate themselves otherwise. Too often, I would hear about white students yelling the N-word and teachers stood aside and said nothing. Too often, I would see Confederate flags hung proudly on cars as I pulled up to Wayne Valley. Too often, I was told not to visit Patterson because of the crime rate, as though the stereotype represented the entire town. Too often, I watched as my friends who identify as part of the LGBTQ plus community were not represented at all throughout history or English classes, but through merely one health class explaining pronouns and definitions of sexualities and, and transgender as though that was the extent of their communities. If we want to show that Black Lives Matter, we need to value and represent the experiences of Black living. The choices made in the curriculum do not go unnoticed. In order for us to all understand each other, we must consistently learn about, about Black history from a young age in school all the way up to high school to encourage this being a lifelong effort. Thank you for your time and please consider what I've said. Thank you very much. One more. Hi, um, this is Maria Pranzo. I'm a resident of Wayne. I live at 14 Chicopee Drive. Um, and I've been a resident of the town for 46 years now. I'm, I'm probably considerably older than many of the callers that you've had so far. Um, and, and I'm really thinking about this as both 
an alumni of the Wayne School System and the uh, a, a parent of a child in the Wayne School System. Um, and I'm calling about the mascot. Um, when, uh, you know, when I was a child and I went to Wayne Valley, um, I remember, you know, going to school and having the mascot. Um, and, you know, I think about it today and, and I recall the situation where my daughter was in gra grammar school at the time. She's in middle school now. And um, she came home with homework from her teacher. And her teacher uh, was t teaching the class about the first Thanksgiving. And, uh, you know, it was a, it was a, a part, it was, it was an assignment where the, uh, you would talk to your parents and see what they were thankful for. And, and also a lesson about the first Thanksgiving. And throughout the entire uh, lesson that I was going through with my daughter, I noticed that all of the references to the indigenous people of this town were referred to as Native Americans. And I remember when I was going through school at her age, that the term Indians was a very common term. Um, and, and I noticed the difference there. And so, you know, when I look at the issue with the mascot today, I, I don't understand why it's not okay in the classroom to refer to Native Americans as Indians, and yet for sport on the field, it's okay. Um, I know people have a history um, and feel that it's, a, it, it's part of the Wayne heritage to, you know, and tradition to have Indians as a mascot. But, you know, we evolve as, as a town, as a country, as a people. And when we know it's not okay to teach children in our classroom, that Indian isn't a, an appropriate term to refer to people as, then I, I think we should follow through on the field as well. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Oh, a couple more raised hands popped up. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, Evan Cavello, 29 Sunset Terrace. Um, so, uh, while I don't remember what the exact operative clause that was stated in the, uh, resolution at the start of the meeting regarding mascots, I do greatly appreciate it being mentioned. Uh, there's certainly a lot going around, going on in the world right now, uh, particularly the public health crisis, which I'm sure is taking up a great deal of your time trying to prep things for the fall and get the schools open. So I appreciate that as well. Um, you know, speaking out on, you know, issues like this regarding race, it could be difficult. It could be uncomfortable, but it is critical. Uh, I come um, before you as a Wayne Valley class of 2014 graduate, and I also graduated from Rutgers State University uh, of New Jersey uh, class of 2018. Um, one of the largest stakeholders in our educational institutions, I believe, is alumni. Uh, we as alumni will always bear our school colors, uh, particularly Wayne Valley for me, on apparel that we have, on yearbooks, diplomas, and on varsity letters, and so much more. And I really am proud to have graduated from Wayne Valley. I love my time there. I served as student body president, and I was a play-by-play -play announcer for the many athletic teams of the school. And I was, with those roles, I was often one of the first to promote Wayne Valley students and its student athletes and games. And from that experience that I have, I really do believe strongly that it's time to change the name of the Indians mascot. And looking back, I, I wish back then it was something different. Now, as everyone has said, it's incredibly insensitive, uh, culturally insensitive. And going forward, it'll be more difficult to teach a greater amount of inclusive values in our Wayne schools uh, with this name hanging over its head. Uh, as an alum, uh, it really is embarrassing to tell people that Indians was my high school mascot. I don't view this as a new issue. I think it's been around for years and it really is great to see that people feel, including myself, feel more empowered to speak out about it. Um, thank you for your time and I hope you consider that going forward. Thank you. Next. Good evening, my name is Judy Bragna, 18 Pontiac Drive. I'm not calling regarding the um, mascot issue. I had sent an email to the town, to the Board of Ed, and Don Pavlak, I believe, did say that the matter of the eighth grade 
trip to Washington, D.C. being canceled is on the agenda. I did not see it, so that's why I'm calling, because the township canceled the trip. The company... Ma'am, ma I'm sorry to interrupt you, but uh, frankly, that's not an agenda item. Um, I hate to ask you to wait for the next public portion for that discussion. Okay, that's fine. I was just, you know, I'm going off of the email that I did receive from Don that it would be added to the agenda for this evening. Uh, it's not on our public agenda, no. Uh, but when you come into the next public portion, you're free to ask any questions on that topic. Okay, thank you very much. I'm sorry, thank you, but we have to follow procedure for everyone. Uh, okay. I think that was the last hand for this portion. Can I get a mover to close? Madam President, there's no one else who I can't see. I would move to close the first public portion. Mr. Fadlock, Mr. Giordano. Okay, next we move on to committees. Who would like to start committee reports? Mr. Bubba. Um, facilities and Transportation met tonight uh, with myself, Mrs. Kazan, Mrs. Putup, and with our administrators, Mr. Meso and <coughs> Mr. Moffitt. Um, we had five things on the agenda tonight. Uh, first thing we discussed was the facilities use permits. Um, right now, we're not issuing any permits until we have all the regulations in place from the state on how to safely open the fields. Um, and then once we have our schedule in place, because we have to separate our sports a little more than we normally would, so we have to see availability first before we even start doing permits for the fields. Um, second item on the agenda was the ESIP, which is the energy renewal. Um, we're ready to turn over an agreement to Amoresco. Uh, bids are due July 1st, and we're moving along very well with that. Uh, then we had the prep of school cleanings um, for the summer. Uh, there was a head custodian meeting today to kick off the summer cleaning schedules. Um, everything is in place, and we are moving forward with getting the schools ready for open in September under whatever guidelines we are given by the State Department of Education. Uh, then we also looked at a construction policy where Strauss SMA has <coughs> alerted us to a change in our policy for construction contracts to clarify background checks and things like that. So we'll be adding that as a first reading tonight. Um, and then transportation, we are working on the plan for summer school transportation to make sure that we are compliant with social distancing and cleaning. So we are going to have to run multiple vans on the same route just to make sure that we have those things in place. Um, that was one thing. And then the other thing was we were looking at an interim for transportation, transportation director. Um, and then we also want to look at maybe reorganizing to save the district some money. Thank you very much. That's my report. Thank you, Mr. Bubba. Anyone else with the committee report? Mrs. Albanese? Um, the Finance Committee has had two meetings since our last meeting. Uh, we met on June 11th. We also met on last night, June 24th, in attendance were Eileen Albanese, Matt Giordano, and Kathy Kazan for the board, as well as uh, Mr. Moffitt, the um, business administrator and board secretary. Um, we reviewed many agenda items um, between the, the two meetings. We uh, did not have any budget transfers to review. Uh, we looked at purchasing updates. We discussed um, legal and architectural services, general business services and special ed services. Um, we discussed the Sodexo food service contract, uh, which I believe will be coming to the next agenda. There is a contract on for, for tonight, but I think there's more to come for that. Uh, Mr. Moffitt, you could correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, we looked at our emergent school resource items. We looked at some co-op pricing agreements. Um, we discussed a transfer to capital reserve. Uh, we looked at the PCIA lease for next year, and Mr. Moffat, I'm sure, will give more update on that. Um, we did review contracts for our school doctor and our um, board legal counsel. 
uh, the business operations office will be opening July 6th and um, employees will be returning in a socially distant manner. Uh, we had a minor discussion about a 2020-2021 budget update. As all board members are aware, that's, I'm sorry, that's, that's still um, up in the air a little bit uh, with what we're going to get as far as state aid. Uh, our early childhood center project is uh, well on track and getting ready to open. And we got an update on our ESIP project as well. I'm sorry for the phone message in the back. That's my report. Thank you, Mrs. Albanese. I believe you're next, Mr. Giordano. Yes, thank you. The uh, communications committee met uh, earlier this evening. Uh, residing at the meeting was myself as chair. Uh, Eileen Albanese, uh, Sean Duffy was uh, not present for that and representing the board was Dr. Toback. Um, we really only covered two major areas. The first one was uh, an outline of the end of the year newsletter, which was, uh, I encourage everybody to take a look at that newsletter. It's really, really well written. There's a lot of uh, very strong, um, very heartfelt stories about graduating seniors being written by uh, counselors. Um, there's information on where graduates are going to uh, in the future, how much scholarship money our students got, which was quite a bit, which is a, a big salute to all of our uh, academics for giving us uh, some great students to work with here. Uh, a list of college acceptances, which was enormous. Um, we did note that many of them are trying to stay closer to home, um, especially with the uh, given circumstances of society today, being closer to home may be uh, more, of a, a more of a better choice. But even with that, there were still a tremendous amount of college and university acceptances that were outlined, uh, stories of uh, student athletes and up and coming stars uh, in the uh, Wayne school system, uh, not just limited to the high school area. There were some stories about uh, elementary successes and elementary profiles, which was wonderful to see. And overall, it made for um, its usual excellent newsletter and I encourage everybody uh, when you get a chance to uh, go through that it's a really nice uh, read free for the beginning of the summer. Um, Dr. Toback talked about the thought exchange uh, in some detail but that was a big part of it. Uh, some of the results were discussed just as a quick uh, up on it. It looks a lot like um, an early July one is what they people really responding to. It was a very very positive um, set of exchanges. There was very little uh, mudslinging going on, more constructive criticism than anything else, which is great for us to see here. Um, and it, it just shows another example of how we go out to our communities and uh, get support on ideas and how successful it actually is. So um, a tip of the hat to Dr. Toback and his ideas on using the thought exchange. And that is my report for communications. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Giordano. Anyone else? Were there any other committees that met? Mr. Uh, Madam President, Madam President, if I could, I'm sorry. Uh, I would have loved to have been at the communications uh, committee. However, I did not get a invitation to the Zoom meeting. And hopefully moving forward, we'll get that, that out. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Mr. Moffitt, did yeah, you just, have just your hand two, Yeah, two items just to add to what uh, Mrs. Albanese uh, expressed as part of the uh, update. The Sodexo contract, normally during the review process, you see uh, menu prices and a la carte prices. Uh, due to the fact that we've had the, the shutdown for the pandemic, the board has wanted to take a real good look at the, the proposed pricing to keep it as manageable as possible for the general public. So we're gonna be reviewing that uh, next uh, board meeting. And hopefully at that time, we'll have a suggestion on prices. Uh, and the other item was related to the ESIP. Uh, we are going out, uh, we've advertised, uh, we have an ad on our website as well for ESIP financing, which will be open and due back uh, in our offices on July 1st at one o'clock. Uh, but that advertisement has uh, been uh, displayed in the newspapers as well as on our uh, website. So those are the two pieces of information I just wanted to share as part of the update for uh, the committee meeting. Thank you, Mr. Moffitt. Uh, at this time, would someone like to move the PWS items as a unit or move the next agenda item? Madam President. Putup, Mrs. Putup, would you like to move the PWS portion of the agenda? Yes, I would like to move the uh, PWS portion. Yeah, just if I can interrupt. Go ahead, Mr. Martin. Yeah, this is the regular meeting. So all the PWS items come in. 
so we had to take a vote on everything. I'm sorry, there are two there are two separate portions of this agenda. There's the PWS items and emergent items. Okay, are you are you saying you want to add as a consent agenda for just all the items that are identified from last week that rolled in? Correct. Okay. Thank Not you. the emergent items. Well, including the, the, the walk-ins, but they're on the emergent agenda. Okay. Any okay. of the changes, obviously. So you're going to move from, from I to R. B, right? That's what you're calling for? No, actually. Or, the, or Q, rather. The first, yeah, Q. The first emergent item is R. So up to Q. That was moved by Mrs. Puttup, and that was seconded by, I believe, you, Mr. Pavlak? Correct. Okay. Oh, is there any discussion? Seeing none, roll call, please. Mrs. Albanese? I'm going to vote no to M9. The approval to hire emergent vacant positions. Um, again, no disrespect. I just feel that that's a board function and should stay part of the, the voting for our summer meetings. Uh, yes to everything else. Mr. Bubba? Um, no to M9. Yes to the rest. Mr. Duffy? Go and turn your microphone on. Is he there? I don't see him. He's, he's muted. Oh, there you are. <laughs> this grid is, I go blind for a while. He's muted. You have Kathy. to unmute. Stick up your thumb if it's, a, if it's a yes, Mr. Duffy, unless you have something you need to say. He has both. You can't unmute yourself? Okay, we'll try to come back to you. See if you can unmute yourself. Would you like to call me? Mr. Duffy, call my phone. And I'll continue to take the vote. Take the rest of the roll. Did you hear me, Mr. Duffy? Mr. Giordano? No to M9, yes to the rest. Mrs. Kumar? Yes. Mr. Pavlak? Uh, Mr. Moffitt, is is S five on this, or is that on the next? Okay, Sean. What would what did you want to say? S will be on the. This way. If there's yeah. anything I should abstain on, I abstain on that, and yes to the rest. Okay. That's under the emergent. Yeah, it, I have that. That'll be in the emergent. Not under the. Okay. Request. Just wanted to check. Huh? That's fine. And yes to everything. Yes to everything. Yes. Thank you. Mrs. Puttup? Okay, hang on. Yeah. I'm sorry, Mrs. Puttup? Yeah. Mrs. Shear? Yes. Um, and Mrs. Kazan will be next. She's on the phone. I'll, I'll okay, I'm talking to Mr. Duffy, who wants to vote yes to the PWS items, and so do I. And I will, with the exception of the um, authority to uh, hire, I believe we move that to the chair of the personnel committee last year and uh not sure what the vote count is on that item okay uh, but if i could just ask for some more information so the no on m9 is both for yourself and mr duffy well he hung up no just me So I have five votes in the affirmative uh, for the M9. So it passes. Okay. Night. Yes, Mrs. Shear, is that on a vote for uh, me? It already says through consultation with the personnel committee, so that's fine. Because I'm the chair of the personnel and I'm Yeah, it's not already on there in the resolution that you would be consulted. Okay. Mrs. Shear, yeah. I just wanted to make sure that that as was- As well there. as the board president. Okay, good, even better. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Pavlak. Um, okay, time for our retirements. Who would like to go first? Mr. Bubba.
you're on mute, Mr. Bubba. Give me a mic. You have to unmute yourself. Okay. There you go. Okay. Prior to coming, Mary Ellen Greer, prior to coming to the Wayne School District in 2000, <coughs> Mrs. Mary Ellen Greer worked in Bloomfield, Saddlebrook, and Passaic Park as a pre-K, first grade, second grade teacher and media specialist. She was hired to start up Fallon's Media Center Library when that building reopened. After creating, maintaining, and facilitating that collaborative work and learning space for students and adults, <coughs> she was called upon to help open Anthony Wayne Middle School in 2005. Mrs. Pandolfi knew there was only one person who could recreate a student-centered library to serve as the hub for the new Anthony Wayne Middle School, and so she took Mrs. Greer with her to Anthony Wayne Middle School. Since 2005, Mrs. Greer has served as a leader regarding all things student literacy, as well as technology. <coughs> she has spent countless hours teaching classes and training her fellow educator, educators in the newest and most productive technological platforms that help to enhance teaching and learning. A lifelong learner and passionate educator Mrs. Greer has been a very important part of Anthony Wayne Middle School's success in focusing on students' overall social emotional wellness. Of note, her leadership in bringing the One School, One Book initiative to Anthony Wayne Middle School will forever be part of her legacy. Furthermore, the One to One rollout for our school last year was only made possible with her careful planning <coughs> and follow through with student and teacher training. Much more than just a librarian, Mrs. Mary Ellen Greer will be missed. On behalf of the Anthony Wayne Middle School learning community, we wish her many years of good health and happiness as she embarks on her next chapter. Congratulations, Mrs. Greer. Okay. Uh, Mr. Pavlak? Mary Ann Coogan. Mary Ann Coogan has been working at James Fallon as a cafeteria playground, playground aide for over 20 years. She has always been a very caring, dependable person with a pleasant demeanor. Mrs. Coogan always was reliable upon, upon to ensure that the children's safety in the cafeteria and the playground was, was well undertaken. She has also worked well with her colleagues and her staff and will be greatly missed. Mrs. Coogan is also is looking forward to spending more time with her family and, and grandchildren we wish, we wish Mrs. Coogan much happiness and success and health in her new chapter in her life. And just on a personal note, um, Marianne was there for both my children in James Fallon, and she was always a professional and always the most caring person you could ever want your child to be with. God bless and best of luck in your retirement. Suzanne? I'm sorry, Mrs. Spada. I always forget, we're in public. Margaret Vitri. Margaret Vitri attended St. Thomas Aquinas College in Spark Hill, New York. She successfully completed her studies with a Bachelor of Arts degree in English Literature. After years of being involved in both her daughter's schools and Girl Scouts, she discovered her passion for working with children. She enrolled at William Patterson University and earned her New Jersey teacher certificate. Shortly after that, Margaret began teaching as a paraprofessional in the Wayne School District in September 2000. For three years, she worked with students side by side as a one-to-one -one paraprofessional. Margaret recalls working with excellent Wayne teachers during that time, and her role as a paraprofessional helped her prepare for an incredible journey as a teacher for the following 17 years. In September 2003, she was hired as a second grade teacher at Albert P. Triune School, where she remains still today. Margaret is an excellent teacher, and during the 2017-2018 school year, she received the Governor's Educator of the Year Award. Margaret worked tire tirelessly to ensure that her students' needs were met. She always had her students' best interests at heart and provided her students with a safe and welcoming learning environment. Students were fortunate to have had her as a teacher. Margaret has been an asset to the Albert P. Triune School community. She is an excellent educator who will be greatly missed by students, parents, and all those that worked with her over the years. And that includes me. We thank Margaret for her service to the students of APT 
and the school community, and we congratulate her on her retirement. Ms. Margaret Beatrice's last day as a teacher of the Wayne School District will be June 30th, 2020. Mm -hmm. Wish you all the best in your retirement, Margaret, as I do to the rest of the retirees. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Potter. Mrs. Scher? I'm sorry? I wasn't given one. Okay. I believe I gave you one in the email. It was okay. it was Dorothy Zimanchowski. Okay, I guess I'll have to read two now. Um, <laughs> that leaves you, Mrs. Albanese. Uh, Maureen Weir. Maureen Weir joined the Wayne Township Schools community in 2003. She started as the physical education health supervisor at Wayne Hills High School. She later became an assistant principal, then the principal of Wayne Hills High School, and has spent the last three years in the central office as the director of secondary education. During her time in the Wayne schools, she touched the lives of so many, and for this reason, we have several contributors to her retirement piece. Mr. Ruick, principal of Wayne Hills High School, shared the following. When I had arrived at Wayne Hills, I had already met Maureen and knew she was a good and genuine person. When my parents passed, she warmly sent prayer cards. Her staff meetings were a thing of positivity. She really made you feel that teaching and being an administrator was the most noble and important thing one could do. Each meeting was full of carefully selected videos from cutting edge speakers and simply anyone who has ever worked with or interacted with Maureen knows what a kind, sincere person she is, one who genuinely cares about the well-being of every student and staff member. She believes in people and celebrates their gifts by finding opportunities to let them shine. She trusts in others and supports them as they move toward their goals. Her uncompromising integrity has earned her the respect of all with whom she works and serves. Always eager to credit others above herself, Maureen remained humble even when she deserved all of the recognition. The Wayne Hill staff commented that while she served in her roles as assistant principal and principal at Wayne Hills, Maureen was always visible throughout the building during the day and on the athletic fields after school. In fact, faculty members could be heard marveling that this was the first time a principal made time each day to make visits to classrooms on the second floor. Maureen takes a genuine interest in people, and when she speaks with you, she always makes you feel special. She believes in working as a team, encourages collaboration, and fosters a team environment. The central office will truly miss Maureen. She joined our team in, 27, in January 2017 as the Director of Secondary Education. Not only did she support the secondary administrative team with defining and achieving their goals, but she served as a friend and a confidant to so many. Her huge heart and empathetic and compassionate personality are just a few qualities that make her so special. Every morning when she entered the building, she could be heard greeting everyone with good morning team. Each week she would bring crumb cake and coffee to the central office team. This would be a time for us to gather at the table and just enjoy some quick conversation and laughs. Moyne always knew that food helps contribute to a warm and inviting office culture and creating a space where people can be themselves, share ideas, and appreciate the company of colleagues. She will always be remembered for her warm and compassionate personality. We will certainly miss her, but know that her legacy will never be forgotten. And on a personal note, I've known Maureen Weir for many years. Maureen is a treasure. She is always the first person to recognize a need somewhere else in someone else. She's a mentor to administrators. And while she will most definitely be missed, she will most definitely never be replaced. Congratulations, Maureen, and enjoy your time. Thank you. Mr. Duffy, are you able to unmute and do your retirement? I think so. Yes. Can everybody hear? <laughs> you are live. I, uh, this is a very strenuous uh, meeting, if I can say the least. Okay, I have Carol Hunsiger. Congratulations, Carol, on the announcement of her retirement. She has been a dedicated and appreciated coworker of the Wayne Board of Education for 22 years. 
She's an amazing colleague with a true love for teaching. It's profound challenge it and has profoundly challenged the lives of so many children. Carol is energetic, passionate, and patient. She has gone above and beyond each child to learn of their interests. If there was an activity, a toy, or an item the child seemed to enjoy, Carol was the one finding it or buying it. She puts the students first over anything, even herself. She was always the first teacher walking into the classroom, preparing and gathering materials for the day. To ensure the success of all students, she has had the reputation of being a dedicated, demonstrated. That dedication to her position in Wayne Public Schools and because of this, she developed trusty relationships with everyone she encountered. It has been a pleasure having Carol as a member of the school community. So as we are said to see Carol go, we are confident she will find the same success in her retirement and continue to touch the lives of so many. We send our best wishes and congratulations on a well-deserved retirement. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Duffy. And last but certainly not least, Dorothy Dimachowski. Dorothy Dimachowski, known to all as Dot, had a lifelong dream of teaching children. Her dream was realized when she was hired by the Wayne Township School District, where she began her teaching career 36 years ago. Dot was initially hired to teach special education in a self-contained classroom at Pines Lake School. However, after several months, she was transferred to Ryerson School for the second half of that school year. The following school year, Dot was transferred to APT School to continue teaching special education in a self-contained classroom. Several years later, Dot became the first resource teacher in Wayne, where she remains today. Dot is an excellent and well-respected teacher. She has been the recipient of the Governor's Educator of the Year Award not once, but twice. Wow. The first time Dot received this distinguished award was during the 1991-92 school year, and the second time during the 2015-16 school year. I know that Dot feels grateful to the Wayne School District for affording her the opportunity to do what she loves, teach, and to have worked in a school that she considers home. Ms. Dimachowski is an exceptional teacher that has had a positive and lasting impact on the lives of her students. Her education, her dedication to her students never wavered. She always has her students' best interests at heart and provided her students with a safe and inviting learning environment. She is supportive and nurturing. She understands the importance of not only educating her students, but caring for their emotional and social well-being. She has a thorough understanding of the educational challenges that her students faced and the ability and knowledge to teach students so they can be successful. She inspires her students to do their best and she knows how to make them feel important and valued. Students were fortunate to have had her as a teacher. Dot has been an asset and valued member of the Albert Peter Hume School community. She is an excellent educator, educator who will be sorely missed by students, parents, and all those that have worked with her. Fortunately, the memories and friendships that she has built at APT will last a lifetime. We thank Dot for her 36 years of service to the students of APT and the school community. We congratulate her on her retirement. Ms. Dimachowski's last day as a teacher with the Wayne Schools will be June 30th, 2020. Thank you for 36 years of service and good luck in your retirement. Long, happy, and healthy. And same to all of our retirees this evening. Everyone will be missed, and I echo your comments on Mrs. Ware, a, a treasure for sure. Uh, I, I tried to figure out a way to make a motion to keep her against her will. <laughs> we, thought <about> it. <laughs> we, we thought about it. Okay, at this time, we'll move on to the emergent portion of the agenda. We have a choice of doing this one by one or moving them all together. Can I get a mover? Uh, I would move the entire emergent items all together. Okay, so we're moving R through. I'll second it. R through uh, X. Yep. Mr. Pavlak, second by Mr. Bubba. Any discussion? on those items. This is where the graduation is. Um, I have a question on that one, Dr. Toback. Uh, 
this is definitely being decided this evening that we will be doing July 8th with July 9th as a rain date, students only, based on the result of the thought exchange. Is that correct? I want to make sure that the public fully understands what we're voting on regarding the graduation in person uh, at each high school. At 10 a.m. with a live at broadcast. 10 a.m. with live streaming so that the parents can watch. Yes. Correct. Okay. Um, Actually, I didn't. I have a question too. It's, oh, not, ahead, Mrs. Kumar. it's not written in there. So I just want to clarify about the graduation, the date, um, but also because it was mentioned, but it's not written. Is there a barbecue or isn't there a barbecue? That's the other yes. question. Okay. So yes. Well, that was a surprise, Mrs. Kumar. <laughs> well, I'm just saying <laughs> I'm it's not kidding. written I'm there. So, I'm you know, I want to be there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there was there was sentiment to have the barbecue, so we'll definitely we'll go okay. ahead with the barbecue for the students afterwards. Thank you, Mr. Bubba. Can we actually have a barbecue? That was. I mean, with with social distancing <laughs> rules and serving of food, how are we doing that? So it, that's the, as far as the food service goes. Ultimately, there would be no uh, it would certainly not be buffet style anything like that. And um, the, it is entirely possible that we would probably set up a barbecue that would be prepackaged, so that students would have their own, you know, they, they pick up their own package, so it would not be, there would be no interaction. Um, and then as far as social distancing, it depends um, on how many students want to stay. We would set up taped areas to make sure that students keep their distance. We would set up uh, tables with reduced numbers of people at them. Um, so we would set it up so we would, it would be entirely possible to keep the, the six foot distance. Um, so that's, that, was, that was the general intention. I actually had friends who recently had celebrations and they hired a barbecue service for that very reason because they could serve the food directly to each person wearing gloves and no one touched the food other than what was being handed to them. So, and they were all obviously cleaned and sanitized before they were handing out the food. So it, it was done very well. I thought it was a great um, option during this COVID time. Uh, anyone else want to comment on any of these agenda items or have any questions? Okay. Roll call, Mr. Moffitt. Mr. Baba. Yes. Mr. Duffy? I think you're muted, Mr. Duffy. Go ahead, just give a thumbs up. <laughs> do you wanna do you wanna call? So, so did I take There you go, you're open. There you go. Oh, there you go. You're good. <laughs> uh, Emergent V11, no, the rest, yes. Mr. Giordano? Yes. Mrs. Kumar? Um, yes, um, R2 for the graduation. It's a yes on the graduation. Honestly, on the barbecue, I have some safety concerns, and until I know kind of what the plan is, I am not going to say yes or no to that. Sorry, that's just how I feel. Um, and then S5, I have to recuse myself for, and V11, no. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll note the barbecue comment, but the action itself did not include it, so I'll record that. Yeah, as that's did. why I wasn't sure, yeah. Mr. Pavlak? Uh, yes and no. I mean, I'll abstain on S uh, five, and so I'll, I'll register the same um, as Mrs. Kumar concerning the barbecue. I'd like to see a uh, plan before, but yes. Mrs. Putup. Yes. Mrs. Shear. Yes, and I'll abstain on S five. Mrs. Albanese? Yes. Uh, and Mrs. Kazan? I am voting no to the 11. 
for the same reason I voted no last year, which was the process, and in this case, uh, for financial reasons. Um, and that's uh, yes to the rest. All motions carry. Okay. We'll move on now to our open public portion on any item. This portion of the meeting is open to citizens for comment on any topic. Residents are to state their names, addresses, and subject matter. Comments may be limited to five minutes per person. Members of the public are discouraged from speaking negatively about an employee or a student. The board bears no responsibility for comments made by the public. Comments regarding employees or students cannot be legally responded to by the board. Other comments may be responded to tonight or at subsequent meetings under old business. Can I get a mover? I'll move. Second. This is Second. Albanese. Wait, Mr. Giordano, I think you were. That's first. That's fine. What it was saying. Anyway. Okay. I see a raised hand. Hi, everybody. This is Ferris with Tap Into. A quick question about the graduation. Did you say July 8th. Is that for both schools at the same time, Wayne Valley and Wayne Hills? Great. I see the nods. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. Is the resident who wanted to speak during this portion still on the meeting? I don't think I see your name. I'll address that at the end of the meeting for you. And or, brother, is, is there anybody else? I, I don't see any hands raised. Okay, if there is no one else, I would move to close the public portion. Thank you, Mr. Patlack. Well, second that. Second by Mr. Duffy. Yes, um, you can hear me. Yes, just in time. The meeting's about to end. <laughs> For the important um, part. Okay, at this point, uh, old business. Does anyone have any old business? Uh, new business. I actually do. Go ahead, Mrs. Sherry, you first. I just wanted to say thank you to administration and the board for actually having graduation for these kids and letting them go and see one another and throw their hats in the air. I know not everyone's gonna be happy, but the bottom line is, is that it was put out to a, not a vote, but a thought exchange. And this is what the kids want. And as a parent, I'm ecstatic that they're going to get that closure and see, get what they want. So thank you so much for making this happen. Mr. Pavlak, you had your hand up? Yes. Um, first of all, I'd just like really thank the administration and the teachers and all our staff for what we've been through for the last four and a half months. Everyone was faced with challenges and it seems like while there were hiccups along the way, the administration and the staff and our teachers have, have risen to the occasion. It's not been easy for any of us. For those who, who have children home and all of a sudden we're homeschooling and we're video, it's not something that anyone wanted or asked for. But you know what? We, we've had, I think we've actually risen to the occasion in this district. Um, and to our retirees, um, Maureen, I've known Maureen for my time on the board here always a professional. And if we have any, anybody in this district, in the supervisory level, who wants to emulate someone, she is the person. She has always been the professional. From the time I remember when she became vice principal at Wayne Valley, and up to the point where she became principal and director of secondary ed. Always a professional person. The, he, he, you, you just put her picture next to professional. She should be teaching in every college in the state of New Jersey and this country to emulate what a professional administrator should be. She, she is it. Um, and to all our students and who will be moving on, it's amazing when you look at the list of colleges and you look at the, the amount of scholarships that our students have achieved. And you know what? 
it all comes back to what they did, what their parents did, and what our teachers did for them. We, we, we're not perfect in this school district, and no school district in this country or this world is perfect. But when you look at what comes out of our school district, it is amazing. And to each and every one of them, I wish you the best of luck. I wish things were not the way they were. Thank, thank goodness we can give them a graduation that they well deserve and every one of them deserves for the amount of work that they've put in for, for the challenges that each and every one of them faced in, in this year and through their entire year, years in the Wayne School District. God bless them and I wish everyone the best of luck. Thank you. If I could just interrupt a second for and, and have, as opposed to this being part of new business, but board member comments, because we do have that as a section now and it's last, uh, because I did have some new business, um, if that's okay with the board, if you don't mind if I interject. Um, Mr. Geppert, uh, I had asked Mr. Moffitt to ask you to be prepared to discuss our future board meetings because now uh, the guidance has changed and we are allowed to meet in person under certain guidelines, but I know that there are board members and even perhaps members of the public who may not be willing to meet yet in person. So my question was, and that you would be prepared to answer this evening, is can we do a hybrid model where some board members can zoom in and some board members meet in person and same for the public because not all members of the public may want to come to the meeting, but we need to be able to let them speak if they cannot because of the um, health issues. So I'll uh, wait to hear your comments on that. Sure, yes, a hybrid meeting is possible. Uh, the law still, because we're in a pandemic, permits a Zoom meeting to occur during the time that that occurs. So uh, we can do the Zoom meeting into the future. Now with the uh, lifting of the executive order and the size of the crowds, that permits us to meet in person as well. So we do have that option. Um, if you do decide to use a component of in-person, then that does create uh, all the restrictions that we have to follow, the six foot distance, uh, masks, things of that sort, bathrooms, public areas, uh, it is more complicated. There are a hand, handful of boards so far who have done uh, several members, and president, vice president, with the superintendent, the business administrator in a room, appropriately spaced with the rest of the meeting being done by Zoom. Of course, you're gonna have health concerns, there are members of the public uh, and boards and that who, who may feel because of their condition or their age or situations that they're not comfortable coming to an in-person meeting. And for that reason, that's, that's a reason to have uh, a continuation of the Zoom. Uh, but I mean, as of today, I think the majority of the boards still participate by Zoom, but you certainly can, as you think in the future, add an in-person component to it with the appropriate safeguards. Okay, so we've all heard that this is a possibility to do as a hybrid. So the question is, does someone want to move to a hybrid model and those who wish to attend via Zoom versus in person can make that decision on a meeting by meeting basis? Same with the public. Um, and if so, uh, let's do that this evening and take a vote. Uh, would that be appropriate at this point, Mr. Gebert? Yes. To vote on this uh, item? Okay, under new business. Okay, so, so I need a mover to uh, state for the record what it is we're moving. <laughs> Who's raising their hand to move? No. I have a question. Not, yeah, no. I have a question too. Well, let's let's have the agenda <laughs> item first. Let's, let's have the, the resolution first, and then we can continue discussion. I'll move it to the point of discussion. There you no. go. Mr. Pavlak, you're going to move that we can have a hybrid model. Second, Mrs. Albanese. 
Okay, now discussion. Mrs. Sharp, you had your hand up first. Um, I, I was thinking that being that everything's still iffy and as we have a lot of issues with Zoom as is, things get a little funky. So I would propose that we would keep July and August, since they're usually smaller, quicker meetings, that we would keep them on Zoom and maybe revisit this in September. Mr. Pavlak? Uh, I agree with Mrs. Scher. Until uh, I want to see a plan of how we're going to do it and what we're going to do, not just say we're going to do it. And I agree, I think July and August, being that there's not a lot of business usually going on other than hiring and, and you know, renewing normal contracts that we do, mm -hmm. that we come up with a plan for September and say, based on the current status of what the coronavirus is today and where we are today, I think it's hard to say that we're going to move on, you know, to open public meetings and because things are changing. It's a, such a dynamic situation. We really don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. We could be locked down in two more weeks. When you look at what's going on in the rest of this country and what's expected. So I, I would agree with Mrs. Sherr. Let's stay where we are for July and August. And then let's look to uh, consider going back into the public in September. But let's have a plan of how we're going to do it, where we're going to do it, and what we're going to do. Anyone else? Um, actually, my biggest concern about all of this, as we've been talking about it, yeah, there's a lot of technology issues, even just doing it on Zoom, right? And then we're talking about this hybrid model. What's the technology going to look like there if people are opting in one way versus the other? Um, so I don't know the answer to that question. Um, so, <laughs> so I think we do need to think about, okay, what does the hybrid model look like if that's going to be an option? Because I think it's going to have to be an option for a lot of us. Um, even if we, you know, we give ourselves some time to think about what it looks like and then revisit it once we have like some type of plan for what it's going to look like. Um, yeah, that's kind of where I am with it. Mr. Moffitt, did you get a chance to discuss that with Dr. Burchard about it being a possibility? No, not as far as the technology, no, I can definitely do that as part of the fact. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. I spoke to Mr. Geppert um, and I obviously have technology questions for myself, just if we can, uh, host it in, in various different places, but I would definitely, if uh, as part of this planning process, would definitely reach out to him to see if we're, we're set up and capable to do that. Okay, fine. So uh, does someone want to table this or rescind the motion and we'll address it at a later date? I, I, I think Sean had his hand up uh, after Sean. Is something, Sean? I would consider rescinding it. Go ahead, Mr. Duffy. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I was uh, <laughs> just moving something in. Just waving? <laughs> I was just waving it down. Madam President, I rescind my motion. Have... Okay. And the second as well is on board with rescinding the motion. Yes. Okay. Well, well, we'll address this at a later date. And you're listening, Dr. Bouchard, so you might want to get back to us with some um, – guidelines or best practices or how you think we could even accomplish this should we choose to go that way in the fall. Um, you're in on the meeting. Okay, so back to board comments. Go ahead, Mrs. Albanese. Um, I want to echo the sentiment of thanking our administration, our teachers, our students, and also our parents who uh, became uh, unexpected educators throughout um, these, these last few months of distance learning. So thank you to everyone, both in the school, teachers who were working from home, the administrators, the central office staff, um, you know, everyone really banded together and um, you know, did, did a, a remarkable job under the circumstances. Um, I wanna congratulate our um, graduates, our 2020 graduates. Um, we wish you all the best. We hope you'll have a wonderful graduation ceremony, as well as a wonderful send off to the next stage in life. Mrs. Shear, congratulations on graduating your first child. Uh, it's a momentous occasion, you should celebrate too. Congratulations to you as well as all the other parents. Um, Mrs. Weir, we love you, we miss you. And as you can see, you are 
uh, irreplaceable in our hearts. Um, I also want to recognize all of our students who completed the school year this year, our kindergarten move up students, our fifth graders, our eighth graders. You all have done a wonderful job, every student through our school district who will move up, who has done the work and put in the time and is ready for a little bit of summer fun and relaxation. We congratulate you and we look forward to seeing you all in uh, some form in September. So congratulations to everyone. Thank you. I think you had your hand up. Um, I share the same sentiments as my fellow board members. I would also like to thank those people who called in this evening. This is not easy. Change is hard. Especially when we're talking about racism. Very close to home for me. Thank you. Any other board comments? Okay, I guess I'll be the last. Um, I won't repeat what's already been said about our wonderful staff and our parents and our students and everyone who stepped up to the plate and had a wonderful year other than to say congratulations to the class of 2020. Uh, I'm excited about the resolution that was read into the record this evening. Um, I, I share your uh, passion and emotion for this, Mrs. Putta. I have an African-American godchild who's 34 years old, and I have a Hispanic goddaughter who is 21 years old. And I've seen the difficulties that they faced in their lives. So this is something that's important to me as well. And I'm looking forward to how we handle this um, and reporting out uh, on our progress and I thank everyone for their uh, input this evening on the subject. And I, I hope you realize that this is a true commitment from us. Uh, we mean it. And we will uh, do this for, in a deliberative process involving all stakeholders. And um, I think a lot of people agree that uh, the, the world needs to change for the better. Um, there, there's a lot of negativity. Uh, and it's time to uh, really focus on the positive and, and make the world a better place for everyone, race, color, creed, or religion. And I'm happy to be in a district that's willing to take those steps forward. Um, and I'm looking forward to July 8th, and I'm looking forward to uh, congratulating the class in person. It's something that, as a board member, I look forward to every year because, uh, you know, we don't always get to be with the students. And that's, that's a big day for me, and I'm, I'm pretty sure for the rest of the board as well, uh, to be able to hand them that cover for their diploma and to wish them well and to see their smiling faces and uh, just think about what a, what a great group we're, we're sending out into the world and into the future. And don't forget us and come back and let us know about your successes. And um, that's it. If no one else has anything to say, can I get a mover to close? I'll move. Who was that? Second. Who moved? Oh, Mr. Pavlak and Mr. Giordano. Okay. See everyone at the graduations.